So the first thing to understand is the core foundation of controlling inside is we need to keep our opponent's shoulder blades pinned and him flat on his back. Any escape your opponent does is gonna involve him either turning into you to either start getting his knee in and escaping or turning into a double leg, or he's gonna turn away from you, in which case he might expose the back, but that's a different attack. So if we wanna main, can maintain control, we need to keep his shoulder blades pinned. Two of the biggest mistakes people will make, the first one is that a lot of people are taught to really focus on this cross face. And the cross face is a great tool and I use it all the time, but a lot of people, they fixate so much on the cross face, but if he can still get on his side, he can alleviate the pressure and create slide back and shrimp and I lose the pressure for control. Another big way that people try to control that doesn't work in isolation is they focus on using their elbow and knee pulling together to pin their opponent's hips in. So if I'm here and I pull my elbow really tight and I keep my knee really tight, you can go to the other side really fast, right? And I get my knee really tight here, I'm tight here, but the reality is that if he starts shrimping away, this is not enough force to prevent him from getting his hip out. So we need a different method to be able to keep him pinned. So these tools we just talked about are really useful, but the core foundation of being able to control your opponent is learning to use your chest pressure to keep his shoulder blades pinned. So uh, there's many different variations of how your opponent can escape and how you can control, but all of them will involve keeping their shoulder blades on the mat. And the foundation of that, I'm gonna show it by using this drill here of using my chest. So I'm just gonna put my hands on the floor and I wanna open my chest and extend my thoracic spine. I even pull my chin back. And what I wanna do is almost like I'm trying to, to balance my entire body weight on my chest, right? So I'll just move this out of the way here. So you can see here, if he tries to turn into me, like turn into me, I can actually use my chest to distribute my weight all on this side, and that keeps that shoulder flat. This shoulder, so turn in a little, wants to come up off the mat, right? So when I stay here, turn in really hard, see, he gets stuck down, right? If he tries to go the other way, I drive my weight back this way so you can move back and forth, right? Now, no matter what my arm is, if it's a cross face, if it's on the hip or whatever I'm doing, this is always gonna be in play. So if I'm controlling someone, often they'll complain that my cross face is really heavy, but the reality is that comes because I keep the chest pressure. So as he tries to turn into me, I can keep this really heavy cross face pressure because I can keep him flat with the chest. All right, so let's talk about some common ways your opponent's gonna try to escape and how to dissipate those using the chest pressure. So one of the most common things is as we're controlling, our opponent's gonna start framing with this top arm. Depending on how good or how set the frame is, we can deal with it differently. First off, if I'm way over top initially, even if he pushes, he can't get his shoulder off the floor, right? Because if there's a force coming straight down here, I'm right over top, and he pushes up into this, it still drives his shoulder into the mat. If my weight is back here and he pushes, now he'll actually start to like kind of shrimp out, he'll start sliding away. So my force coming at this angle is actually, as he pushes into it, drives him away, if that makes sense. Whereas a force coming straight down, his force just drives his shoulder back into the mat. So if I'm here and I can keep this over top position as he pushes, he'll stay put and it's not too big of a deal. And I can usually maintain. But some, nonetheless, sometimes the guy gets a good frame in the neck and you can't quite deal with this. This is where I like to go over top of the arm, because now he keeps framing the neck here, but I'm, I'm able to get over top and dissipate that. So you go that way a little. Yeah, so now I can start to go here, and again, I'm gonna keep the chest really heavy here, and now this handle starts switching, and I'm gonna progress to north-south. So keep turning into me really hard here. Right, so he tries to turn in, and again, I just keep using this chest pressure to pin him. Now from here, I can progress all the way to the other side. I could come back down start regathering and start rebuilding the position. But no matter what control you're doing, the compass of the position is gonna be uh, guiding your way through and trying to find a way to keep the shoulders pinned using your chest. So the next common issue is gonna be this inside elbow getting a good frame on your hip or your rib cage. So there's two different ways this one can occur. One is if he's framing up on my top hip here, this one is way less of a threat because if he starts circling away from me, like shrimp away, see, I can follow him here very easily with my knee, go all the way around over there. So in this case, it's not as big of an issue because if he's blocking the top hip, as he shrimps away, my knee keep going, yeah, can follow here very easily and I can keep the pressure. The one that becomes much more difficult is when this elbow frames on my rib cage, you're gonna need to be over here, it is when his elbow frames on my rib cage, right? In this case, as I try to follow, you see he wedges me out, right? In this case, when I'm here, I try to stay over top and as he starts blocking there, I'm gonna switch my hip in 
and focus on pulling this elbow up. Now, again, my core objective is to keep the shoulder blades pinned, but I'm gonna use more of the side of my rib cage and distribute my body weight across this way. So now as he tries to turn back in here, I keep him flat, I can elevate this arm, I'm gonna bring my knee back up to eliminate this, and now I can start coming back into a strong control without his elbow able to frame. So understanding this principle doesn't just apply for side control, but really all pins in general. Whether I'm controlling inside, half guard, mount, I always wanna focus on keeping the shoulder blades on the mat because my opponent is so deleveraged. So if we start inside uh, and I wanna to progress towards mount, often what I'll do is, again, I keep the chest pressure heavy. That's the number one priority. He'll often have his knees up here, so I'm gonna use my right hand and start pushing this leg down. As I push this down, it exposes the access for this knee to start coming up and threatening going towards the mount here, right? As I threaten this, it's much easier for me to walk him down and start sliding this left knee up high to start getting access to trap this arm. Once I trap this arm, I have multiple threats. For one, it's much more difficult for him to get any frame, as I showed before, to get space and I can control here. From here, I can push this wrist up and feed it to this hand, or if it's down lower, I'll pin it to his hip. I'm gonna slide my left shin here close to his low back and I throw my leg over and I can go for a triangle from here. I could turn this into an arm bar. It's a very powerful attack. Um, also from here, after I trap this arm and I pin this leg, I often like to shoot my knee up high here and I'll uh, swipe this elbow and keep the pressure high so he cannot mess with my leg and I'll come over to mount. But again, notice with the chest pressure, even if he got half guard here to lock up on the foot, as long as I keep my chest heavy here, so you keep moving and turn in, turn either side, try to turn the other side, he can't move anywhere because the chest pressure is so heavy. But if you're doing all these same positions and you're not opening the chest and the thoracic spine like I talk about, and you're down here, he has room to start moving and he'll start feeling so strong. But as long as you're maintaining this pressure here, you have plenty of time. I can start coming up and getting a cross face and use my foot, go around the other side there, and I could start using my foot here to pry this off and start building and working up. And even once I'm in the mount here, I wanna stay low. If I go too high too quick and he starts getting on his side, he can start elbow escaping. But when I'm in the mount here with this low chest control, for him to do any elbow escape, he has to get on his side, right? He, ha he cannot, if he does an elbow escape, just start pushing the legs, he has to get on his side to get out, right? So if I'm here, and I'm down like this, even if he starts pushing on my knee really hard, he doesn't ever get on the side. And it's easy to pull this up and start building and sliding up the high mount and attacking. And one last detail on mount, I'll do a separate video on this at some point as well, but as when I'm low here like this and I have this strong control, it's a great time to really start threatening the Ezekiel choke. And as he starts coming up with his elbows to defend, it makes it much easier to start gathering these elbows. And now as I come up high, the mechanism to keep his shoulders pinned is actually my hips and the control of the elbows is what's gonna pin him instead of the chest. But if I'm low here and he has the elbows in and I do this, now there's actually nothing sitting on him to keep the shoulders pinned. And he can start turning on his side and creating escapes. So another really common pattern combining the mount and the control is I'm here and sometimes my opponent will dig an underhook, right? And again, understanding our core objective is to keep the shoulders pinned. It's not even necessarily to keep side, it's keep the shoulders pinned. So when I'm here, if he starts turning in and I'm really attached to side control, it's very hard because he can start getting up on the side. But when you understand the broad idea and he turns in really hard with this underhook, I step over towards mount. And again, I keep the chest down. Even if when I do this, go around that side, right? Even if when I do this somehow, so you get the underhook really hard here, I come here, if he puts this in half guard, like lock my foot up, it doesn't really matter. If I stay low with the chest, he's still pinned. I have a brutal cross phase. I can deal with this later. The objective is to keep the pressure and make him trapped in the position so you can create the opportunity for attack, whether it be from mount, uh, half mount, or side control. All right, guys, I'm gonna discuss a few more conceptual thoughts, but before that, if you guys really enjoyed the video, be sure to like and comment to help support the channel. So I wanted to talk about the idea of keeping pressure versus trying to hold a position. Uh, a lot of times people, when they have side control, or they have mount, they're really focused on like they have that position, they have to stay in that position. But again, the broader idea of keeping pressure is so much more important because sometimes to hold side or hold mount isn't possible based on their response. But for example, if I hold mount and I have a lot of pressure, 
pressure, and again, I'll do videos on this in the future. If I have mount and I hold a lot of pressure and he turns over, I'm not gonna try to force him to stay on mount. I allow him to turn over and get the back on top and maintain the pressure. But if you use keeping the pressure on top as like your compass, it's gonna help you make much better decisions in your process of controlling. Uh, as well as if you really wanna get good at passing the guard and just uh, being on top in jiu-jitsu in general, starting with controlling side and specific training is super important because if you don't have a good side control, how can you be good at passing? Because to pass the guard, you have to get around the legs and hold the guy inside for three seconds. So if you can't hold side well, you can never truly pass the guard. So if this is something that you feel like you're weak at, really invest the time in developing this because it's gonna make a huge difference in your long-term improvement.